So hey guys, this is your favorite fanfic universe. So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto was a guardian spirit. But before we start, be sure to subscribe and like this video because we the give the quality content videos. Now let's start. Oh shit. I sense people on the other side of that. Sasuke opened a portal to defend himself against Naruto's attack made to combat his Indra's arrow, his own strongest attack. Pick. Save the five cage. Or save the world that will be destroyed by your attack on the other side of this portal. Sasuke stated to Naruto very clearly. The attack that Naruto had launched, his portal would aim the attack right at the planet on the other side of the portal. Naruto had a choice to make, and he had very little time to choose. Sasuke aimed his Indra's arrow at where the five cage were bound to the remains of the divine tree. The choice. Save an unknown world, or save the five lives of the cage of this world. Sasuke smirked. I'm cutting you out of my life, one way, or another Naruto. Sasuke. Naruto shouted, but he made his choice as he flew in his giant avatar towards the portal that had been opened up. Naruto flew right through the portal, because that was the right choice. There was no choice at all, not when he could sense a bunch of lives on the other side of the portal that his attack would wipe away in the blink of an eye. Naruto. Got it. Grab your other half. Naruto shouted to Kurama inside of him as he went into the portal, and one of the giant fox tails turned into a huge hand and grabbed onto a meteor that was floating in the sky below them. The half of Kurama inside of him wasn't going to allow his other half to stay nearby Sasuke if they were going to go through the portal. In another world a portal in the sky opened up. That. Is quite the. A woman spoke as a portal she could not define, that she couldn't even understand the first thing about, opened up. It was like the sky itself was ripped open, and then just like a horror movie, it happened. Two huge spiraling and bladed spheres, each larger than mountains, shot out of the sky towards them. The woman just placed her hands behind her back with a soft smile, as she looked at death coming down from the sky towards her world. Her ringed eyes looked at the coming death, with amusement. Even she could tell that if those attacks hit, then the damage to the planet would be so immense that no more life would be able to sustain itself. Those spheres hitting the world would spell the end of everything. People started to panic instantly. She tilted her head in more confusion when a giant golden creature came out of the portal even faster than the attacks themselves did. The creature was a golden flame-covered fox, with three heads and six arms, as well as nine tails. It looked like the fusion of a Kyubi from mythology, as well as an Asura, and a divine being mixed all together in the form of a deity that landed on the ground. Just as soon as the portal appeared, the woman watched as the giant creature caused an earthquake just by landing on the ground. There was a man inside of the middle head of the creature. The creature was holding a meteor in its tails. The portal closed just as the golden creature caught the two spiraling spheres, and flung them up into the sky with so much force that they practically disappeared instantly. The explosion of the attacks going into space on the other hand became visible, and lit up the sky with a golden glow despite being the middle of the night. Well, this is an amusing. This is a smell I've never smelled before. The woman spoke gazing up at the giant beast that had landed. Sasuke -a. You bastard. Open a portal back to our dimension, and fight me like a real rival would. It speaks. He speaks. The woman noticed the voice that spoke was clearly male. The people of the nation she lived in all scattered as fast as they could, leaving her mostly by herself as the only calm person. She saw the giant fox avatar start to fade away, and if she didn't see it with her own eyes, she wouldn't have believed it. Not even with all of the knowledge that she possessed would she have believed herself if she told herself what she had witnessed. A portal opened up. The world was almost ended. The world was saved by an inhuman, godlike figure, appearing and landing in their nation and catching the attacks, before throwing them up into space. Damn him. You hear me Sasuke, when I get back to our homeworld, I'm going to shove an explosive kanai right into that ass of yours. Gah. Screw you, and screw me for doing the right thing. Why do I have to be a good guy? Naruto landed on the ground in his normal form, and started to pace back and forth. Why did he have to be the good guy, and not have the heart to allow a world to die? Because he should have let this world die, since he was pretty sure that Sasuke was never going to open a portal back to this world. He was also sure Sasuke would kill anyone who opened a portal or tried to come and rescue him, meaning he was good and trapped in this world. On the bright side, he can't undo the infinite Tsukuyomi without the chakra of all nine-tailed beasts. I was able to grab my other half at the last second. 
Eventually, Sasuke will need to come back for us if he wants to undo the Genjutsu. Kurama inside of Naruto stated. He had figured out a way to ensure that eventually, Sasuke would have to make an attempt to come for them. Hello. What is your name? Huh. Naruto and Kurama asked together, though nobody but Naruto could hear Kurama. A very attractive woman just walked up to them, completely unfazed by their appearance from nowhere and just greeted them while asking his name. She gave off an odd aura that was clearly not human to Naruto, but the fact was most people in his life could barely be called human. Your name, I ask your name. It's what strangers do to each other, when they wish to exchange a greeting. You mentioned another world, a home world. Seeing as you came out of that portal, I would hazard a guess you didn't open the portal. You appear to be distressed, stuck. I figured I would offer you a friendly greeting. You're a weirdo. A giant fox thing comes from the sky. And your first instinct is to walk up to the guy who dropped out of it, and ask him his name. Woman. Are you okay in the head? Naruto asked the red-haired woman, who just had a face on her. A face that didn't shift from a pleasant smile, but she seemed to be memorizing something about him. She took a few deep breaths through her nose, before her smile widened a bit. Naruto looked back up at the sky, and he clicked his teeth. Once you wake up my other half, seal him back inside yourself and make me whole again. Are you going to answer the woman? Who even are you? Did none of that shock you? These people running away are the normal ones, so what are you? Naruto asked the woman, and he pointed at the literal hundreds of people that could be seen running in the distance like their lives depended on it. A rude question, but I can forgive it. You're not from this world, so you must be apprehensive of strangers. I am Makima. I'm a government worker, who protects society from devils. Who are, Makima stopped when she saw the teenage boy just transform in front of her. He flew off in a flash so fast she knew she wouldn't be able to keep up with him. He just ignored her question, showing a disregard for her desire to take control over the situation. With Naruto, I've never known you to be so rude before. That woman was. Off. Something about how sexy she was. It was her eyes, it was like instead of looking at me, it was more like she was looking through me. She was also way too calm for a woman who nearly had her continent blown up. Naruto didn't even feel threatened by the woman, or that she was even a threat. Usually he could sense a person's heart, but that woman had a heart that was under a veil of stuff. She wasn't natural in any sense of the word. Sexy was worrying? No, it was downright creepy. Every motion she made, no matter how slight, seemed so sexually charged, but she didn't even seem horny or slutty. She was dressed in a business suit, but still gave off call me mommy vibes. That is downright creepy, and it almost gave me a boner. I've never met a woman I wanted to punch in the face, and have sex with, at the same time. Naruto was at a mental crossroads with some strange woman he just met, and barely had a conversation with. It was why he hightailed it out of there as fast as possible. You forgot my other half. Shit, going back. Naruto turned around and started to fly the other way, back to where he left the meteor containing Kurama's other half. He kind of needed that. With her there was a yellow flash that went across the sky. The meteor above the city shattered as the yellow blur smashed through it, and out popped a giant orange fox with nine tails. The woman smiled in amusement when she saw the orange fox get seemingly absorbed into the yellow blur, who she knew to be the teenage boy from earlier. Makima didn't know what the giant fox even was, since she could tell it wasn't a devil. It was something greater than that, he flew off again. Giant chunks of meteor started to rain down on the city. The boy appeared once more, and started to punch the various different chunks of rock as they fell down from the sky. He seemed to have realized that when he left, he was leaving it to rain destruction, so he came back to save the city a second time. He's stronger than I am. Hum. Makima hummed pleasantly, and she just walked off. She had planning to do. Kurama was complete. Which meant it was time to train, and unfortunately he wouldn't be able to have any partner to train with. So, Naruto was having to make do with image training as he mentally prepared himself for when Sasuke came to find him, and thus tried to take Kurama from him for his own plans. Naruto just relaxed on top of a building. Okay. As far as things stand, how do I beat him without murdering him? Naruto had to do a checklist of where he went wrong, what his advantages and disadvantages were during the last fight, and how he could counter all of Sasuke's abilities in such a way that he wouldn't kill Sasuke. An advantage I have this time is I'm already stronger with all of Kurama, and Sasuke can't steal Kurama's power to do that Suzano thing. 
Naruto had already turned one thing into an advantage for him. He had been able to match Sasuke near the end, even when Sasuke used the full power of almost all of the tailed beasts. All he had needed to do to match that power was secretly have a clone of Kurama gather natural energy for him, and then fuse with two clones to hugely boost the power of his Kurama avatar state. Now, Sasuke would not have access to half of Kurama in order to give himself that same boost as before. Also, unlike last time, this time. Let's face it, you went into that fight with barely any strength left. What with three days of war, fighting Kagaya, and ending the war pretty much just you and me. Kurama pointed out, and as long as Naruto kept himself in pretty decent shape without exhausting himself, he would be ready for Sasuke at pretty much any moment. Also, even if you don't want to use a Rasenshuriken and kill Sasuke, you should at least use a wind style, Rasengan to counter his Chidori and negate it. Kurama gave Naruto that advice as well. I could do that. Naruto, Sasuke was willing to sacrifice an entire world's worth of people just to cut you out of his life. You need to at least be willing to blow one of his arms off. Kurama knew that Naruto didn't want to cripple Sasuke, but the least he could do was think about what Sasuke had done. Naruto only sighed. No, he didn't though. Let's face it, Sasuke knew me well enough to know I would go through the portal. Naruto knew it had never been an option. Five lives versus several billion lives that existed on this planet. Sasuke opened that portal knowing that there was a 0% chance that he would allow innocent people to die for their fight to continue. Meaning that Sasuke teleporting his attack away in the end didn't risk the lives of anyone on this world, simply because Sasuke knew his mindset too well. Yeah, I guess you're right. You two know each other too well. The next time we fight, Sasuke will make sure it happens in this world, where innocent people can get hurt if I go all out. Even if I'm not exhausted like last time, I still won't be able to fight him at full strength. Which brings us back to square one. Naruto slammed his hand against the roof hard enough to shatter part of it, but he sighed at his own frustration. He had a counter for everything. Chidori, wind style Rasengan. Teleportation, clones and speed chakra absorption, Senjutsu chakra. Gravity manipulation. Raw fucking power Amaterasu. Chakra cloak defense. Genjutsu. Kurama to break it the fact is, even if he could counter it all, the act of countering Sasuke would most likely be crippled or killed by the way he countered him. In the end, he was right back to perfectly matching Sasuke blow for blow while holding himself and his killer techniques back. Hello there. And who are you talking to? Mishima? Naruto recognized the weird woman when she climbed onto the roof and walked right up to him. He sat up and watched her with narrowed eyes, because something about her just seemed off. How did she find him? Makima, actually. Who are you talking to? The scary, world-ending, monster demon fox that lives inside of my belly, who is now complete, and bigger than mountains. Just talking with a friend you could say. Naruto said the most true, but also the most unbelievable statement possible. Either he would be seen as crazy and avoided, or this woman would be afraid of him and avoid him. Oh. Well that certainly is an interesting friend you have. The fuck? Are you okay in the head? Naruto asked as he sat up all the way, and looked directly into Makima's smiling face. Not only did she take his words seriously, and seem to believe him, but she flat out showed no fear and accepted his words as just casual talk. I just told you I could end this world at a whim. And you? Okay. What are you? Well, that is a complicated answer. I guess you could. Makima slowly moved her finger to poke her lip, as if she was considering how to answer. Well, let's settle for what I'm doing. I'm here to invite you to have lunch. Makima instead just avoided the question completely. Not a human is the answer. That would be an answer. Are you an enemy of humans? Naruto asked her, since he could tell that she wasn't human. She unnerved him too much to be a human. There was something unnatural about her. Makima just smiled and looked at him with her head slowly turning up. He could tell that he had asked a question that she found very amusing. Oh, now that question doesn't have a straight answer. I'm what one calls necessary evil. I work on the side of humanity, and I don't wish for the destruction of humanity. I don't even wish for the mass murder, or general murder, of humans. I quite enjoy the things humans make. Now, let me ask you the same thing. What are you? Makima seemed to lean forward slowly. She crouched down so that she could see eye to eye with him. Her every move was sex appeal. Geez you're damn sexy. Stop that. 
Stop being sexy. Stop being sexy, exactly. You think I'm an idiot. The subtle way you move your neck around to show off how thin it is, and how soft your skin is. The way you constantly give new angles to see your face from, but never break eye contact. Even when you crouch down, you make sure to give peeks of the way your pants press against your butt. Naruto could tell subtle seduction when he saw it. He was the fucking master of perverted ninjutsu and small details. Oh. I didn't think I was sadu, there, there it is. You glance up and push against your lip with your finger. You show how full your lips are with the lip touch, and don't think I didn't notice that while you do that. You use your non-revealing clothes that hug your curves to make people want to see you naked. Naruto hopped up to his feet. He rolled his neck and cracked it, before shaking himself loose. He had been on the roof for a while. Makima seemed amused. Thank you for complimenting my looks. You're paying a lot of attention to me, you notice the smallest of movements. You are very observant. I might not understand women that well, but damn if I don't understand how to seduce a person. Subtle touches. Subtle breaks in eye contact to give a person a chance to glance at your body. So, Melina. Makima. Right, Makima. Naruto didn't even forget her name that time, he was just trying to get some sort of annoyed reaction out of her. What was weirder was how she didn't even deny she was trying to seduce him at this point. She just slowly stood up, before she dropped her smile for a moment. The worst part. You smile a lot, but your smile isn't even fake. Your smile just has no joy behind it. Your heart isn't even empty. Oh. You can sense my heart. That's it. That's why you're so unnerving. You can genuinely smile when you aren't feeling joy, and you don't see things, you see them. You call yourself evil, but you don't see yourself as evil. Do you? Naruto figured out why she unnerved him so much. She was seemingly in control of herself. She could smile without any joy like Sai, but unlike Sai, her smile was still genuine. It was a genuine smile that didn't hold all the same emotions a smile was supposed to have. I have done evil things, so in that aspect, I am evil. I have also done more good than bad, so how can I myself be evil? We all have both good, and... Makima stopped after a moment when she made eye contact with Naruto. Her joyless smile stopped for a moment, before she frowned. It seems I was about to lie. That is. What are you? Naruto smirked. When I sense people's hearts, I can let them sense my heart too. I'm an open book, go ahead. What were you saying? Naruto crossed his arms and smirked wider. Everyone has good and evil. Makima didn't say anything. There. There is no darkness inside of you, is there? Makima didn't let her smile return right away as she stared at Naruto. This is unnerving. Makima was honest with him about it too. She leaned forward so that her forehead was inches away from his. A human without darkness inside of them. Or are you even human? What human is so open they would literally show a stranger their heart? Makima had never dealt with a human like this before. Never in her life had she met a human so strange, or even so powerful. Somebody who could pick out all of her subtle mannerisms and call them out for what they were. No matter where I go, you're going to keep finding me aren't you? Naruto didn't ask a question, he made a statement. Somehow she found him and got to him. Even if he had not a clue how she did it, the fact was she did it and she was going to keep doing it. There was a long pause between the two of them. It depends, are you saying no to my lunch offer? Just be honest and tell me what you want. If you want me to treat you like an equal or a friend, then I expect honesty. I'm not going to just let you manipulate me, I've got better things to do than dance in the palm of your hand. Naruto didn't want to play her games. The awkward pause got longer. An equal? Yeah, an equal. You're stronger than I am, but you will treat me as an equal, instead of an inferior? Well, yeah, I treat everyone equally. How can I make friends, if I treat people like they are my inferiors? That certainly does make some sense, but if you could control people, would that no be better? Makima asked him. Naruto laughed. How can I laugh, love, and enjoy people if I control them? Nah. If you want somebody to stand by your side, you have to be willing to stand by their side too. After all, people aren't dogs that show you unconditional love. People are people. Naruto laughed when he realized this woman seemed to have absolutely no clue what he was talking about. He could read confusion in her ringed eyes. So. Let's go get something to eat, your treat, I have no money. Naruto pointed out. Makima was silent, before she allowed her face to show her same smile. Oh. And I thought you weren't going to be manipulated? 
Nope, I'm not being manipulated. Just because I'm doing what you want, doesn't mean I can't say no but I am hungry, and you have money. So if you want to talk, we can talk with full bellies. Naruto felt a lot less unnerved by the woman now that he had broken through some of her act. Also, he hadn't eaten in four days, he was starving, Chainsaw? Chainsaw Man, the hero of hell. He saves those who call for his aid, and then proceeds to kill them as well. Wow. Not much a hero, is he? Naruto deadpanned when Makima told him the story about the hero foe hell, while they were eating at a Yakiniku store. He couldn't imagine hearing somebody call for his help, save them, and then just kill them himself. Then again, I question why you want to. I just don't get it. Naruto didn't understand this woman. She was a devil. An actual demon, the control devil, also known as the pestilence devil due to her ability to control animals that spread diseases, such as rats and crows. It was how she had found him, a crow had seen him on top of a roof which told her exactly where he was. She had the power to spread deadly diseases at will, and she could exert control over those who were inferior to her, if she understood them as inferior. When Chainsaw Man eats a devil, that devil's core existence is erased, which makes him useful in making a perfect world for me. A world where there is no death, no war, no famine, and no bad movies either. Makima explained her goal. At this point, she was pretty sure if she lied to Naruto about anything, he would call her out on it. She explained her powers to him, and what she was for many reasons. The biggest one was to see his reaction. He didn't have much of one, which pleased her. You don't need a chainsaw man for that goal. Well maybe the death thing, but honestly, life isn't worth living if it goes on forever. Knowing your life will have an end, just makes you enjoy the time you do have more. Naruto didn't agree with Makima on ending the cycle of life and death, and ending it with just life being the only thing possible. Makima stared at Naruto and listened to him, I disagree. That was it, that was her statement. She didn't state why she disagreed, she just disagreed. Well, even if you get rid of death, you would also need to get rid of disease, you would need to get rid of hunger and aging. You would also need to get rid of pregnancy and childbirth so that the world doesn't just because nothing but people. Get rid of hunger. If you don't get rid of disease and aging, then eventually everyone will be living a hellish nightmare as skin and bones due to age. Unable to die. Naruto explained another angle of how no death, but without the other things that come with age being gotten rid of, would just be a nightmare. I can get rid of those too. Makima would just add that to the list of things to get rid of. Well, then you're also getting rid of delicious food. Without hunger, most people just won't want to eat, so most food stores will shut down. The economy will crash too. Food is one of the most primal things about people. Oh, and without hunger and death, the animals will stop eating each other. Animals are driven purely by instinct, so take away their instincts. The world will be a boring place. Naruto started to draw a line in the air and explained the issues with her plan as he saw them from an outside point of view. Makima just leaned forward so her face hovered over the grilling meat, and she heard the sizzle of the meat, and smelled how delicious it would be. She gazed down at it for a brief moment and considered it. Then hunger can remain. Okay, but then you need to keep death too. Animals would be eating each other, but unable to die. And you stopped them from breeding. So eventually there will be no more meat. Naruto explained to Makima. She nodded slowly. Okay, then breeding can remain as well. But then people won't stop breeding, and eventually the world will just be purely covered in people. With nothing better to do in life, people will fuck. And with no aging and no death, the population will never decrease. My plan may be flawed. Makima sighed and actually, for the first time in her life, Truloi relented and considered the different outcomes that each erased devil would cause for the world. She saw her perfect world crumble in her mind, because if an idiot like Naruto could so simply point out everything wrong with her plan, then she had fooled herself. She had been so sure of herself that she refused to see the downsides. My plan is quite flawed. Makima was more firm with her next statement. She glanced at Naruto. War? I mean, you don't need to erase war to stop war. Peace gained through an illusion, and peace gained through a lack of free will, isn't real peace. It's just suppression. Naruto didn't agree with Nagato who wanted the world to become peaceful through fear of destruction, and he didn't agree with Madara who would suppress the world with illusions. Neither of them wanted to end war in a way that he agreed with, those he did admit they were valid ways to get rid of the concept of war. Peace through understanding. How exactly? No clue, 
but I'm confident I can find an answer if I don't give up. Work together, forgive others, and try to understand your enemy is what I'm trying right now. I don't know if it will work, but hey, it's better than a false solution. Naruto wasn't going to pretend to have all of the answers. He might not have an answer, but he knew a wrong answer when he saw one. He knew how to spot something that did not agree with his morals. Makima was very interested. So, you have no real answer, but you deny my answer that will work. Makima had never heard of such an argument. I totally deny your answer, it's wrong and takes away people's free will. The people will want to fight, but won't be able to. I want to make it so that people won't even want to fight, Naruto stated. Anger, aggression, rage, killer instinct. I can erase those, and then war goes away. Okay. Then you erase people's ability to defend themselves from nature. Rapists aren't angry or feeling all that aggressive when they rape, it's lust. All you did was make sure that nobody would ever be able to fight off a rapist. Also, without aggression and killer instinct, criminals will roam free due to police not having that aggression needed to stop them. Society will collapse. Naruto extended his hands. Makima smiled wider. He was poking holes in all of her plans so easily, and he was just using his moral compass to guide his answers. Lust, no more rapists, and without anger and greed, no more criminals. Without lust, no more breeding. Without greed, no more innovation, so people will stop building things for fame and fortune. It's greed that fuels most people's desires to improve. They want more. Okay, so you made a society of people who are just content. To exist. No more fun, no more feeling alive. Just being alive. Naruto explained, because yes she did find a way to get rid of war and crime. But the fact remained that she did so in a way that went so against human nature that it would make society as a whole boring. He could see she was having fun challenging him on this. For a person without an answer, you sure can shoot down my dreams and ideas. Makima would not lie and say she was angry. She was enjoying this talk. Your dreams and ideals are wrong, morally wrong, and just wrong. I'm not only going to shoot them down, but I'm going to fight you until you change them. Naruto would not stand for something that he just felt was so wrong being right in front of him, and furthering its goals. Oh. And how will you stop me? When I get injured or killed, it will pass on to somebody else in Japan. I'll break that contract. You said that contract was with the prime minister of the nation, well, if he dies then your contract is invalid. And you lose the ability to pass off your injuries. Naruto stated, and Makima stopped moving completely. She placed a hand over her mouth slowly. That. Is an oversight I missed. Makima realized that her contract would be invalid if the prime minister she made a contract with was dead. Then, she would be killable, though most people had no hopes of actually killing her. She just assumed that since the prime minister had the best security in Japan, that nobody would be able to do anything to him. She would also be able to protect him and her contract. Not against Naruto though, who could just zip over to him and kill him before she could so much as blink. Yeah. You better go to the prime minister and change that contract so that it only affects people with evil hearts. Because if you don't, I'm going to break that contract. Naruto pointed his chopsticks holding grilled beef right at her. She told him about her abilities, so he had planned to break her contract anyway. Makima smiled. I don't have a choice in the matter, so I will. Back to the discussion. Let's say I use the chainsaw man to erase. Bad movies. Well that one is just stupid, it will work. But seeing a bad movie before you watch a good movie is like. The most fun way to enjoy a good movie. You really want to enjoy a great movie, watch it right after you watch a bad one. Naruto agreed her plan would work, but she was just going to be ruining her own amusement with movies if she did it. It worked, but at a cost of lowering her overall enjoyment. Makima took his words into consideration. I just don't believe the world needs bad movies. Makima would be happier without them. Then don't want them. But other people who watch those bad movies, may be inspired to make good movies. So by getting rid of bad movies, all you're doing is preventing more good movies from being made. People take inspiration from things they hated, to make something they will enjoy. Naruto continued to eat as he spoke to her. She nodded her head. Now that is a good argument for the existence of something I don't like. Yes, quite a few movies inspired by bad movies, turn out good. Makima could see why bad movies had the right to exist. Well, I've eaten. Okay Karama, I'm going to take a nap, you mind taking over for me? Naruto asked the heir. Makima raised an eyebrow. 
Naruto's eyes changed color and his whisker marks thickened. His voice became horrifyingly deep moments later, and Makima just felt a shiver when Naruto opened his mouth and spoke. Kurama spoke. You cross Naruto, and even if he doesn't kill you, I will. I don't care about this world, I will destroy it without batting an eyelash if it endangers Naruto. Just remember that devil. I am Kurama, a being who surpasses anything you can imagine. Kurama stood up in Naruto's body and started to walk away. Well, oh, it looks like a corpse is talking. What were you about to say? Makima shivered. Killing intent of the likes of which she had never felt before just ran through her body. She felt a primal fear go through her, screaming at her to shut up or else face total destruction. The world went black, and she couldn't even see Naruto's body anymore. All she could see was the giant, evil red eye of a mountain of a fox staring down at her. She smiled. Absolutely terrifying. How does Naruto control you? How can such a sweet and loving boy control such a evil entity such as yourself? Makima had never sensed anything so foul, so evil, in her very long life. Something that was tainted by all of the evils of the world, and just had energy that stung at her skin like billions of bees. Kurama smirked. He became my friend. An entity such as yourself is capable of friendship? No, I'm not. But Naruto changed that. This sweet and loving boy, as you call him, is a miracle child. Anything is possible as long as he is involved. Which is why I have his back. And those who would harm him are my enemies and deserve all of my boundless hatred. Kurama spoke with such a deep respect that it left Makima silent. She was confused. That made no sense to her. How? You know exactly how he did it. After all, it just took sitting down for a meal with him, and he ended your dreams. You no longer seek Chainsaw Man anymore. Naruto's heart is so strong, and so true. That as long as you have a heart, his heart will move you. He changes people. He changed you. Kurama walked off with a wave. Makima was left alone. She touched her chest with a smile. Oh. He changes others does he? Dot yes, I do think he does. Of all of his powers and abilities and his unending might, his heart might be the most terrifying thing about him. The power to change even an evil monster like that. To change me as well. Simply amazing. Makima looked down and F saw Naruto had left nothing for her to eat. She smiled anyway, because as terrified as she was, the fact was that she had never experienced something similar to this. The desire to change herself. The desire to have somebody look at how she changed and to praise her. The need to have another talk with somebody greater than her, who saw himself as her equal. Somebody who she couldn't see as inferior to her. This emotion. It is not the same as how I take care of my dogs. This is different. Waitress, I'll order another beef set. Makima was still hungry as well, so she ordered more food for herself. She had a lot to think about. Humans were mostly all the same in looks to her. Black, white, yellow, red, brown, to Makima they were all the same color. Humans were all the same, no matter what physical traits they had. Handsome, pretty, ugly, average, they were all the same to her. When she looked at a human, none of those features mattered to her at all because humans were just a lesser species, and that was all that mattered. Devils were much more varied in appearance to look at. Dogs were much more fun as well, though they looked more like each other than even humans, but at least they were unique. Dogs loved their master unconditionally without taking power or species into account. A dog didn't love their master because they were stronger or weaker, they loved them because they were the dog's master. Yet, humans were not unconditional. It was almost like humans lacked the ability to love somebody the same way a dog could love somebody, not that Makima understood much about love. She only had people who were inferior to her or superior to her, that was it. She felt affection towards her dogs, and she felt annoyance and anger towards devils and humans as a general rule, but it was usually only minor annoyance. She looked up to those she respected, which were limited to a number of people she could count on her hands. Still, everyone had their own scent, which made them easy to understand. Makima memorized the scents of those around her, and she only bothered to remember the looks of very few people. Typically she only memorized the looks of devils who were strong enough to pose a problem to her, or a few humans who at least served an important purpose in the grand scheme of her plans. Makima smiled though. His hair is such a cheerful yellow. And this is quite the sleeping face. Makima smiled as she looked at Naruto sleeping on her couch in her apartment. He was just staying the night, but her dogs had sure taken a liking to him. 
his sleeping posture was horrible, but her dogs might be the cause of that since they were dog piled on him in his sleep. Whisker marks, fox like, three on each cheek, and the very definition of facial symmetry. Naruto had a face that would make for good art overall, and could most likely translate to abstract well. His eyes were rounded but sharp near the edges, and his jawline was most masculine and slightly feminine. He was a man who had inherited the face of a beautiful woman, and his cheekbones with his chin allowed his face to become more heart shaped and pleasant. Makima ran her thumb across his face. She didn't sleep the night before, because she learned he was a deep sleeper. He was her superior in every way, but he treated her like an equal. She was going to actually look at this man, and use all of her senses to memorize everything about him. He was such an interesting humanoid man, and she could only call him humanoid because his scent was unlike that of a human in a way. It was so very close to human, but at the same time he smelled biologically different than human. He weighed less than his size would suggest it should. Makima had her thumb on his face, and his body was just slightly warmer than a normal human should be as well. She could feel his veins, but while his blood was warm, she could feel another energy flowing through something next to his veins. It was like he had more than just veins, but had a second circulatory system completely. The way it gave off a constant warmth with a vibrant life energy, and it seemed to come off of his skin. 361. On Naruto's body, Makima could count 361 points no bigger than the tip of a needle. Each of these points released that energy outside of his body in small amounts, and she could feel with her flesh the very smell release of that energy. There was a strangling of the energy in his body as well, like walls that purposely held back his energy and weakened it. From what Makima could smell, what she could feel, there were eight of them. Two in his head, four going down his torso all the way down to one in behind his crotch, before it finally went up to a single point in his heart. He's so strong, but there are eight limiters on his body. And not to mention most of his body's energy seemed to be focused on supplying the thing on his stomach with energy. His biology is so different than human. He has organs humans don't have. And his body produces energy and sense humans don't have. Makima leaned closer to Naruto and took a big smell of his shoulder. The scent of the warm, sunshine-like energy leaking from his body was just so wonderful to her. His raw power was such a mystery to her. How could somebody who was so strong, get as strong as he was with eight limiters on his body that reduced him to a mere fraction of his true potential? Then, even after his strength was limited, most of his strength went towards powering a thing in his stomach. She liked how interesting that was too. His canines are slightly longer than a human's as well. When he's awake, he breaths through his nose, but he goes full mouth in his sleep. Makima made notes of everything about him. She held his ear between her fingers, and she used her sense of touch to get every fine detail of even his ears. Some parts of his body didn't feel right as well. Some parts of his body smelled younger than the rest of his body, as if he had regenerated entire parts of his body from practically nothing. The age of a human could be taken from their smell as well, and some parts of Naruto's body just didn't match the rest. The right side of his chest was younger than other parts of his body, which implied that his chest had been destroyed at some point and he regenerated it, growing new organs inside of his body. It was a large enough portion of his chest that the smell was noticeable to her. His body was a treasure trove of mystery. Makima traced her fingers down his arm, his right arm, and she could feel the wrongness of it. His arm didn't so much as twitchy when she touched it, but his left hand actually did twitch slightly when she touched it. The secondary circulatory system she could feel and smell inside of him was very damaged in his right hand, up to his elbow actually. His bicep would twitch, but he seemed to have less feeling in his right hand. So he had a whole tour through the right side of his chest, and he also had severe nerve damage in his right hand and forearm, to the point his right arm was numb to touch to some degree. How are you even alive? Actually, you had to get strong to stay alive. Didn't you? Makima might as well be talking to a corpse with how deep of a sleeper this boy was. She could imagine that with how damaged his body had become over the years, growing stronger had been his only method of staying alive at all. Makima leaned over his face, her chest was pressing up against one of her dogs that was sleeping on Naruto, and her lips were barely an inch away from his. Every inch of skin on his face was something she would burn into her memory. The way her hair covered part of his face when she leaned, she enjoyed the way the red mixed with the blonde. It was almost like Naruto had red hair, and she liked the way that looked as well. Makima smiled. The power surpassing that of a god, and a heart full of a god's love and forgiveness. But the humility of man. 
The passion. Even in your sleep, you are a dreamer. You're dreaming it. You're dreaming of a future for you. Your eyes see through lies, to the future. Naive, but full of wisdom. Makima sucked in her breath and backed off of Naruto. That felt wrong to say. Not naive, but an optimist. That seemed more like the right choice of word for him. He was somebody who had seen the darkest parts of the world, so he was not naive or ignorant, but he was instead a person who chose light over darkness. She knew that from looking in those interesting blue eyes. Blue eyes. You are insanely close right now. Good morning. Makima didn't even treat her actions as anything but normal when Naruto showed he was awake now. They were so close to kissing that it would be a shame if she just leaned slightly more forward. So, I have a question. How much feeling do you have in your right hand? If you were to touch my face, how much could you feel? Makima asked her question with her face awkwardly close to his. Naruto's face slid from a slight blush to a deadpan when she asked that question. How much of my body did you touch when I was asleep? I memorized quite a bit, but my question. Makima wanted that answered, since he was right handed and that meant he would use his dominant hand for most things. And what is with these strange dots in your body, on your second circulatory system? And why do you weigh less than somebody your size should weigh? Makima asked so many questions about his more inhuman biological features. His strange second circulatory system, with 361 energy releasing points, and 8 limiters on it. His body not putting as much pressure or weight on her couch as it should. The way his body worked was a complete mystery to her. What? Second. What? Are you talking? What? Oh. Naruto realized what she was talking about. She was talking about his biology. Naruto reached up with his right hand and pushed her forehead off of him. He sat up and the dogs on him fell to the floor, wide awake and scurrying to see why they had been tossed off of their comfy human sleeping spot. That is my chakra network. It's the part of my body that lets me control my chakra. Naruto released chakra from his body, just enough that it would be visible. He stopped right away though and showed his hand. I would say I've lost maybe. A third of the feeling in my hand, it's just numb overall. I've honestly just gotten used to it being numb, so it doesn't bother me much anymore. Now. You mentioned breakfast. Naruto stated to Makima. She looked a little confused. Did I? No, but let's pretend you mentioned breakfast anyway. I'm hungry, and it's... Wait. It's barely past two in the morning. Welp, back to sleep. Naruto grabbed a dog and hugged it, before he rolled over on the couch while holding the happy dog. Not angry I touched you anymore. Just don't molest me or shove anything in my ass. Otherwise I don't really care if you examine me or whatever. Well, good night then. And I repeat, no anal. Naruto had to repeat that to her, since he wanted nothing to do with a complete examination of his body. He had gotten surprise anal once in his life, and that was more than enough for him to never want to be surprised with that ever again. No anal, got it. Or molestation but you seem like the type that would rather I put my hands on you. Good night. Naruto closed his eyes and was out like a light again. He was back to not caring about what was going on. Well, it wasn't like Makima knew that he was only half sleeping. He was also training in his mind while he was asleep, since his mind was the only place he could train without causing mass destruction at the moment. He could train in his mind and soul with Kurama and the other tailed beasts, and since he Kurama in his complete form, he had some training to do to get a handle on the increase in Kurama's power. Though at that point that would barely take any training to get a hold on. Either way. At this point, he could only really train while he was asleep, so he wanted to spend each night training in his sleep, and as many times as possible. Sleep meant getting stronger for the moment. Sasuke was running towards him with a Chidori in hand. Naruto counted with a wind style. Rasengan, and when the attacks collided the wind cancelled out the lightning with the Rasengan blasting off Sasuke's arm. No. But what is between the Rasengan and wind style? Rasengan in power. I need just enough power to barely overpower him, but not enough to cause serious harm. Naruto imagined how that scene would go in his head as he meditated in the middle of Makima's apartment, with her dogs all surrounding him and licking him all over. Naruto would save that for later. Sasuke was using the Suzano, and he sent a Kirin crashing down towards him. Naruto counted with a fast massive Rasen Shuriken, and the attack ripped through the Kirin, before it split the Suzano in half, and exploded with Sasuke inside of it. Redo. Sasuke was using Suzano, and he sent a Kirin crashing down towards him. He took it with his Kurama avatar, 
which was capable of handling the power of the technique with ease, but it left him with an opening. Redo. So I can't counter Kirin without either dodging it or killing Sasuke. Naruto had a counter, but even in his head he didn't see the counter playing out as anything but ending with Sasuke dead. Naruto mentally reviewed his entire last battle against Sasuke, up to the point that he was sent to this dimension. Sasuke rushed towards him with a straight punch. He dodged it at the last second, and Sasuke sent the Amaterasu at him. He had to pull his fist away, but he landed a punch across Sasuke's chin with Senjutsu. Sasuke's neck broke. R-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-H. Naruto grabbed both sides of his head and shouted in frustration at how he couldn't counter Sasuke and go on the offensive at the same time without murdering his rival. Naruto fell onto his back and shook his legs up. He could use Senjutsu and the Frog Keda to beat Sasuke in Taijutsu, but to do so would be to kill Sasuke with the attacks he could use with that fighting style. So you finally decided to kill me. I don't want to kill you dumbass. Naruto muttered to himself as some of Sasuke's last words to him ran through his mind. Even Sasuke knew that he could kill him, and knew that he could have overpowered him, but it would end with Sasuke dead. That bastard really knows me too well. Naruto couldn't believe his bad luck. His rival was a dick. Even Sasuke knew that he could have died during that fight, but it was annoying because Sasuke knew that he wasn't going to go through with murder. Naruto could imagine 300 ways to kill Sasuke, but there was only one way to beat him without resorting to murder or permanent harm. Is it that comfortable on the floor? Sup Makima. I was meditating, but then realized how annoying my own imagination is. Naruto saw Makima smiling as she was assaulted by the tongues of all of her dogs. Did you get off early or something? Naruto watched as Makima reached into a plastic bag and pulled out a rather nice suit. For you. No thanks, no orange means no go from me. Ah. Naruto watched as Makima pulled out an orange tie. Why? Naruto questioned what she was bringing him a suit. Naruto took his jacket off and started to get dressed in the clothes she brought him. He didn't strip naked, but he got down to his boxers without much a care. He had never been one for much shame. The Japanese government understands that you aren't a native of this planet, but they plan to try and have you executed if you are not willing to submit to them and slay devils. Makima laughed under her breath at the humor. Only those in the government believed that they could order the death of somebody who was closer to a god than a human. The human population feared Naruto as a god, since the video footage of him in his transformed state had been spread across the entire world. The fact that he could destroy the world at a moment's notice put everyone in a high stress state, where every moment could be their last. Makima assured the officials Naruto was no threat to anyone who wasn't a villain. Once she told them that, the higher ups believed they could control him. Foolish. Hmm. Seems fair to me, it's some kind of power game, right? I don't mind letting them think they can tell me what to do. Naruto figured it would happen eventually. If it made everyone feel safe around him, then he guessed he didn't mind playing a part for a while. Everyone knew what his Kurama avatar looked like, but nobody knew what he looked like, other than they knew his name was Naruto. If he dressed like the people from this world, he would at least be able to blend in with society and go out and about easier. Oh. You don't mind. Oh, it's super annoying. But dealing with annoying people is important in diplomacy too. Also, it isn't like I plan to cause any trouble. And why are you unbuttoning your shirt? Naruto asked. As he buttoned up his shirt, he noticed that Makima undid the top three buttons of her own shirt. He bra was now visible slightly. Makima smiled. Oh. Do I make you uncomfortable with my body? My girl form is sexier, but I want to know why you are stripping. Naruto deadpanned as she now more slowly undid her buttons. She pulled her tucked shirt out of her pants, pants she wore up to her belly button. Of course, they did demand that some sort of leash be put on you. Makes sense. But why are you stripping? Naruto could see the logic behind them wanting to keep a potential enemy under watch, or at least pacified in some way. Makima slid her shirt down her back so that she was shirtless with her bra out fully. Naruto could see where this was going. Of course. I told them nobody could control you through force. Makima rationalized how she spoke to the leaders of the nation she lived in. It was funny how easy they were to manipulate. Sex? Sexual relations can keep even the hardest of men submissive. But of course, no woman can handle you. But I'm no woman, I'm a devil. Makima had assigned herself the task of pleasing Naruto sexually so that he had a leash that kept him from destroying the world. Well, 
The government had wanted to just send hookers to Naruto every day to please him, but she told them that wouldn't do it. She told them that weak human women just would not be up to the task, and that it had to be a woman of a more powerful species. Oh. So this is part of your plan then? Manipulate the government and force them to force you into forcing me to not. This is so convoluted. Are you trying to have a baby or something? Naruto rubbed the bridge of his nose. Nope, we are not compatible for that due to me being a devil, but it will at least be very pleasurable for you. Also, I wish to put my scent on you. Makima wanted their scents to mingle together. She didn't want some lesser woman to ever put her hands on what she claimed as her own. Naruto crossed his arms. You know I'm only in this world until Sasuke comes and fights me right? If he does. You did mention that your friend Sakura was still not in a genjutsu in your world. So what if your friend just decides that he and her will repopulate the planet by themselves? Or maybe they could just repopulate the world using the people tied to the tree as baby factories. Makima could see two ways to restore humanity while also ending war. Start entirely new bloodlines with dozens thousands of women all at the same time while they are unable to fight back and will never even know they were pregnant. Naruto laughed. Sasuke would never. Naruto's face slowly fell. He reached up with his hand and grabbed his face. Well. Makima tilted her head as she unbuttoned her pants. Naruto knew. If Sasuke were given the option to somehow not risk losing, by instead just repopulating the Uchiha using a world filled with women who had no way of ever knowing what happened to them, he might do it. Not to be evil, but to end the cycle of hatred by making all the people who would take over the world be his own descendants. That would at least make it so that Sasuke could give them all a common thing to bond over, and delay the chances or war for hundreds or even thousands of years. All without ever risk fighting him. After all, now he had Kurama's full power, which made Sasuke having the other eight-tailed beasts completely pointless, the gap in power was just too much to overcome easily not when Naruto's own power dwarfed what Sasuke could do without the tailed beasts. Well? Makima asked again. Yeah. Sasuke isn't coming. Fuck. Naruto let out a deep sigh of immense disappointment when he realized just how fucked he was. Repopulation was just the easier answer for Sasuke, and it was the answer that had less risks towards him losing his control over the situation. Sasuke was a genius, and if somebody like Makima could come up with the plan, then Sasuke could for sure as well. Fuck. Yeah. Sasuke isn't a coward, but he's smart enough to see a losing battle. Sasuke would rather just play the long game and leave me here. Hey. Why are you still taking your pants off? Naruto saw her ass, her panty-clad ass, as she bent forward to pull them over her ass. Makima kept her smile. You said you understood. The government will send assassin after assassin to their deaths after you they will send everything in their power no matter how futile. They know you aren't a threat to them, so they can do whatever power plays they want. It is easier for you to have sex with me, and just let them think they are in control. While you get a very attractive woman like me at your side. In the end, you win. Surely, you would rather date me than go to war against the world. And of course they demanded I have sexual relations with you. Makima could figure out Naruto's answer. Naruto was a violent pacifist. Naruto was a man who didn't hesitate to go to violence when it was needed. He would prefer to solve issues through debate and talking if possible, but Naruto was smart enough to realize a government would sacrifice thousands or millions or people just to make it seem like they were in control. Like they were being active, and they would do that while telling the citizens they sacrificed it was all for a just cause. Naruto knew what war was, and he knew how people played it. Is the sex needed? Naruto saw her stepping out of her pants slowly. Slowly to really show off the curves of her ass to him. Boner activated itself regardless of if her seduction was working or not on him mentally, his body had a mind of its own with getting hard in a situation where he could fuck a hottie. It is very needed. Sex, mental abuse, drugs, and love. These are the ways women control a man. A man will only submit himself to a woman who has abused him to the point of breaking, a woman who has him hooked on drugs, a woman who has him hooked on sex, or the love of his life. The government does not want you to go on a drug rampage. And nobody wants to try and abuse you. So love or sex. And you don't love anyone on this world. So sex. Makima got closer to him. She gently grabbed his hand. That is a very math way of looking at this. Naruto deadpanned, since she was giving it out like it was science. It is a common practice. Men are the submissive masters, and women are the dominant servants. 
Throughout history, it has always been this way. Men have done whatever possible, trying to please women, who in turn give men love and servitude in some form. Love is just an exchange. A trade. Women give a man love and comfort, and men provide while offering protection and loyalty. If one side breaks the contract, the relationship is over. Makima hugged Naruto closely. I don't agree. Then how about forming a contract with me? As a devil, I can make contracts. Make that contract with me. In exchange for my love, my comfort, my warmth, my support. You trade me your affection, your protection, your support, and your strength. Makima offered a contract. Naruto gave her a deadpan look. That literally sounds like you just asked me to marry you. Oh. And here I thought you didn't agree with me telling you how women control men. Makima smiled when she realized for the first time that she had stumped Naruto in an argument. He had disagreed with her saying how women kept a leash on men, only to then state that it sounded like she was asking him to marry her the second she offered him that very same contract women have always used. It was nice to get a small win, but you should save sex for somebody special. Makima touched his face. Naruto. You are literally the only person special to me. You are my only equal in this world, even though you are superior to me. Among all people in this world, only you are unique. So. Let us have sex to keep the government happy, and to make this contract work. Makima leaned towards him so that her nose was touching his cheek. He knew when somebody was trying to manipulate him. You're trying to manipulate me. You're going to let me though, because. You're a genuinely good person. Makima knew she had him at that. Naruto was a genuinely good person, so even if he knew he was being manipulated, if it meant saving lives and preventing war, he would make a sacrifice. Naruto would allow himself to become manipulated if that was the way to get to the best outcome possible. Goo. Because it is a fact, if I don't have sex with you. People will die, many people will die. Every assassin who fails to kill you, will be put to death. Their families will be suffer and be silenced. I offer you a contract, out of affection. The union of our bodies will be the bond that gets the government to label you a non-threat. Because with my contract, they will assume you are under my power. Makima could never see Naruto as inferior to her, so he could never be under her power of control. At the same time though, she could make a contract with him that the government would have to accept as a contract that made Naruto harmless to them. Of course, there were other ways to do this and get the same results. This was just the way that Makima wanted to do, because it worked out for her more than anyone else. Can you even keep up? Naruto asked Makima. Could she even fulfill her end of the contract? She smiled wider. Any injury I get, will be passed along to the bad people of this country. I have literally infinite sexual stamina. If you can last one day in bed, I will last two. If you can last twenty days in bed, I can last thirty. If you can last a year in bed, I can last ten. How does that sound? Makima offered him the first thing that sounded actually tempting about her sex deal. Sex that would last until he physically could not go anymore sounded like it would be actually super fun and pleasing to do. Oh. Exactly. I, and I alone of any woman, can make you feel like I'm sucking your soul from your crotch. Only I, one who will never run out of stamina or get tired, can ever satisfy you down to your very core. Because I am the only woman on this planet who can outlast your stamina. How does that sound? Let's forget about all the government and war nonsense, and let me offer you this contract. I will satisfy you as my man, if you will satisfy me as your woman. Makima would make the offer plain and simple then. Does that mean, yes, and you will? My mouth, butt, or vagina? Any of them are available, even my hands or feet if you want. I can satisfy you with every part of my body. Then the contract. As the control devil, the contract I offer you can never be broken. I am offering you my love and affection as a woman, in return you give me your love as a man. And even if your dear friend Sasuke does come back, you can always just take me back to your world. Makima saw no issues with her contract conflicting with any of his goals. Feet? Yes, even my feet. And, the only way to do this contract, is sex? Naruto asked just to make sure that he wasn't in some kind of erotic dream. Naruto was pinching himself, but he didn't wake up. This wasn't some erotic dream where the world was manipulating everything in order to get him laid with a babe. Makima gave a smirk. The world isn't manipulating events. I am. This is the course of action where everyone can be satisfied with the end result. The government declares you a non-issue, you get warmth and comfort, and I get you. 
everyone ends up better than when they started. I know all of that. But as much as I know, damn it. Fine, I accept this contract. If I'm going to be manipulated, then I'm going to be manipulated because I approved of it. Naruto would allow it to happen. Honestly, it was also quicker this way. If he didn't accept, Makima was just going to keep trying to come up with situations where she would get what she wanted, so it was just easier to give her what she wanted right off the bat. It wasn't like he was in love or had a romantic partner of his own that he needed to worry about. Political Romance This was just like the arranged wedding between nations to keep the peace. It was a lot easier to swallow if he just thought about it like that. Also, a woman with infinite sexual stamina. That just sounded too tempting to not at least see if she was telling the truth or not. Over 600 plus devils killed in less than three weeks, an amazing showing by the devil hunter who arrives on the scene in a yellow flash, and is gone just as fast. We're here in Tokyo, asking locals about their thoughts on the yellow flash. You sir, what do you think? I hate him, he is putting us hard working devil hunters out of the job. How about you miss? If this is the same guy as the fox god that showed up, I still don't trust him. I think this is a ruse to lower our guard around him. Naruto turned the TV off as he slurped up some ramen, he was barely dressed in just his underwear and a white shirt. He had all of Makima's dogs rough housing with each other around him, and a clear showing of irritation on his face. You see. This is public perception of you. Why not go on vacation, 600 devils in three weeks is quite the record. Makima was relaxing in just one of Naruto's shirts and her panties. While Naruto chose to sit on the floor with the dogs, she was lying on the couch with one of her legs hanging off the couch, over Naruto's shoulder with her foot stuck down the front of his shirt. She was just reading a book, listening to the news while Naruto had actually watched it. Naruto actually was indeed putting local devil hunters out of the job thanks to his super speed and practically god levels of just raw fuckery. When a devil was reported to show up, within seconds of receiving the request Naruto would be on the scene, and the devil would be dead in a yellow flash of light. Then Naruto would just run back to wherever he had been before he received the report, which didn't bode well for other hunters who made careers hunting down devils. It is safer for everyone if I take care of all of it though. Most humans in this world are just regular people. No devil hunters have died since I started to kill all the devils. Naruto didn't like the hate he was getting. He was literally saving lives. Why not go on vacation? When we had sex for the contract, we got interrupted before we could really get into it since I had work in the morning. Makima would like to go on a vacation away from work for a while. Seeing as she was a working woman, she didn't get the chance to blow Naruto's mind with sex. They did it for 30 minutes, before she realized that she would need to work in the morning and cut their contract sex off before it could get really pleasurable. Of course, it was satisfying and pleasurable to have sex at all, but as far as she was concerned she couldn't leave her smell on Naruto with a mere 30 minutes. Even a couple of hours wouldn't allow her to mark Naruto with enough of her scent to scare away other potential devil woman suitors to him. Pushing that vacation. It works. You go on vacation, and other devil hunters get to hunt devils again. And when they start dying again, and when people start dying, they will realize just how important you are. Makima was fine with allowing random people to die. After all, Naruto was working himself pretty hard to save lives, but the lives he saved had very little appreciation for him. Makima looked at Naruto. But I don't want them to die, or even hate them. It's just they are so annoying. You are quite soft. Makima had never met a man who was so powerful, but so soft hearted at the same time. Most of the country actively hated him, but he still wished them no harm at all, and went out of his way to save them. Naruto was the most feared man in the country. The irony of it was delicious. Naruto was the softest teddy bear of a person, and while he was powerful, he was the one guy that you could count on to stay iron-willed about not abusing his power. He was humble, loving, and protective to a fault. The entire country feared the one man alive who they didn't need to fear at all. Oh yeah. I guess I am. Naruto didn't deny her claim either. It's fine though. Makima liked him the way he was. Honestly, her apartment had become somewhat of a paradise for her now. She spent more time working from home than she did going into the office at this point. She had the love of her mutts in her apartment, and she had the most powerful man living with her, his scent all over her apartment. It was even more satisfying to know that in her home, she had everything she needed to conquer the world if she wanted. Is it? Naruto asked. It is. But you will be going on vacation, it isn't a suggestion. 
the government is getting complaints left and right from devil hunting agencies around the country about you, and legislation has just passed limiting you. All devil hunters who had a record of 500 devils within a month much take two weeks of vacation every month. That is extremely targeted towards me personally. Naruto deadpanned, since he doubted any other devil hunter dealt with as many devils as him. He had a record of over 600 in three weeks, meaning that his record would force him to take a two-week vacation from hunting devils every month. Makima smiled. When devil hunters do not work, they do not bring in income and do not pay taxes on it. Also, devils typically go after those who fear them more. So the sick, the elderly, and the disabled. The government would prefer that those people who can't provide for society. Stop being a burden on it. Makima explained the dark side of why the government was pissed off at Naruto for doing such a great job. It was the government's form of selective survival. The government wanted to protect the citizens who could provide for society, and pay taxes to further increase the salaries of those in government. Once you became a powerful enough government figure, usually you stopped seeing human life as anything more than just numbers. Makima didn't really care about human lives either way, so she actually supported and suggested the idea to the government that they pass legislation to limit Naruto to two weeks of work a month. She benefited as well. Naruto would spend more time in her apartment, meaning that when she came home after work she could find pleasure in his scent more. How much involvement did you have in this? Naruto asked Makima. She smiled. There was the answer. They wanted to deport you to another country originally. But I offered a compromise. Anyway, you wouldn't be accepted into any country. All governments are corrupt and benefit from the suffering of their citizens. At least with this government I hold great sway over them. Makima would really rather she not have to move to another country, she liked where she was just fine. It would be a hassle, an unneeded hassle, for her to lay the foundations for a comfortable life again in another place. So. What? Naruto asked Makima a question without wording the entire question. What was he supposed to do? Nothing, enjoy your free time. Listen, while your world was constantly in war, my world is far more corrupt. The government in your world actually protects its citizens. Well, in this world, the government uses the citizens. Makima explained the fundamental differences between their worlds. It was just the sad truth of the matter, that while Naruto was used to people killing each other, his world was less corrupt overall. In a world where everyone had the ability to learn to use superpowers, and could overthrow a corrupt government, the government became less corrupt. It was a simple fact of the matter. The more power the citizens of a country had in their hands, the less power that the government had to control them. I don't like it. I'm neutral to it. In this world, this is just how things are. The government wants to strip power from the people, so the government can control the people. Keep them working so they can pay taxes, so the people in government can be fat and lazy. Makima had respect for the government in how they managed to trick the citizens of their countries that they were on their side. It was actually hilarious to think about. I don't understand it. Why can't the people overthrow the government and replace it? Because, they have no power. When the gun devil attacked, every government in the world took the chance and disarmed the people. And every country in the world is ruled by those in government. Makima had seen it happen everywhere at once. The people have no power to fight the government, so. They just submit. Funny, how when a human can't fight, they give up and submit. I don't think it is funny. Naruto had a frown. Makima rubbed his chest with her foot. I see humans from an outside point of view, and I find this entire farce amusing. The humans of this world are stupid, and those who are smart get treated like fools by those who want to control them. Makima thought it was funny. The way the government gaslit the people. Fools. Naruto looked down on that. Take the US for example. 26 years ago they declared a war on drugs. But it is 1997 and drugs are still widespreads there. They still had drugs, and the government still raises taxes on the people to fund their war on drugs. US? Naruto asked with confusion. United States? Okay, the founder of communist China, Mei Zedong, in 1935 took guns away from its citizens. Then, they tried to create a socialist economy, and killed close to 65 million of their own people who disagreed with them. And to this day the Chinese government has an absolute control over the people. China? Naruto asked in sheer confusion. How much of this world's history have you learned? Not a lot. Well, the worst atrocities in history have always happened after the people had their power removed. It's just human nature. 
A weak population is easy to control. Mao, Stalin, Hitler, Castro, and many other dictators who killed their own people first took weapons from their people. In some countries, the governments spend inane amount of money to fix broken education. But somehow the education systems never get better. It is quite humorous. The government tells people it is for your own good, and the people listen. They listen to lies. Aren't you a government worker? Naruto asked Makima with a raised eyebrow. Yes, but I'm not human. I see all of this as mildly amusing, because it just seems to work. I am the control devil, but humans freely give their freedom to the government to feel safe. Even though the government should be who they fear the most, the people are sheep, and the government wolves. Well, guess it's time to move then. Naruto stood up and stretched. Makima raised an eyebrow. Oh? Yep, I'm moving to a different country. I'm not going to live in a country that demands I obey them, and let innocent people die for the sake of their greed. Naruto wasn't going to just sit down and live in a country that was actively preventing him from saving lives. Makima raised her other eyebrow to match. She smiled. Oh. You wish to move, very well then. I'll sort out a list of countries where freedom is less restricted. I suggest we move to a country where it is so large, your overall presence won't cause too much of a shift in devil deaths. Makima would get to work finding a new country for them to move to. Them, not just him. What? Japan is an extremely small country, and with your speed and ability, you can protect all of Japan from devils with little difficulty. So we can always just move to a country that is so large that while you can protect people from a lot of devils, realistically you won't be able to stop them all. Thus the issue is partially solved. Makima could narrow down a great number of countries off of the size part alone, and you want as little corruption as possible. Hmm? We? Naruto asked her. Makima smiled. Do remember Naruto. You and I are bound by contract. Where you go, I go. I would rather stay in Japan, but where we live doesn't matter to me too much. My contract with the Prime Minister will stay in effect regardless of me living here or not. Makima hummed in thought. Why don't we move to Canada or the USA both are decently free, and the USA has Hollywood, which produces a lot of good movies last year alone they produced Mission, Impossible and Independence Day. Makima enjoyed both of those movies. 1996 had been a great year for movies, Naruto hummed in thought. Okay, your choice. Just get me out of this country. Naruto didn't want to stay in a country that would place such personal restrictions on his ability to save lives anymore. But before we move, why not use your two weeks of vacation time? I'm sure we can put them to good use. Makima wrapped her legs around his neck, and sandwiched his head between her thighs. Both of her feet were now pressing against his chest. I have quite the number of vacation days I haven't used. Why? Because I am offering you my love and affection as a woman, in return you give me your love as a man. We have a contract. Makima leaned over him and placed her hands over his eyes. She was using her body to cover his head. So, why don't we take a vacation to a secluded place? Any suggestions then? Hmm. Well there is this vacation resort in Jamaica. I am quite fond of the name. Hedonism too. It is quite the resort, and they teach classes that can spice up the bedroom. They have open grill areas, saunas, a nude beach, gourmet dining. We might not be married, but I think we should have a romantic honeymoon anyway. Makima had actually been looking into romantic vacation locations that could spice up things for them. Also, just a romantic place for them to spend some times together away from the prying eyes of the prudish government. They teach classes about sex. Naruto was confused. Wait. Nude beach. Yes, they teach classes on the Kama Sutra. I think it would be informative for both of us to take the classes. Due to the Japanese internet censorship laws in place, it is rather hard for me to find a good site for ideas on pleasing you better. Makima just wanted to learn some new techniques from professionals, and use that to better please her partner. Also, nude beaches typically don't allow sex on the beach itself, it is just some nude exposure but it is optional to actually go to the beach. How much do you want to go? Naruto asked her. He couldn't see with her covering his eyes. I don't want to go, I want to go with you as a couple. I also want to see Negril and visit their local shops. Also, I find the name of the resort to be fun. Makima liked that as a devil, hedonism was right up her alley. So why not book two weeks at a hotel that literally had that as her name? Of course, you can refuse. Up to you. I'm not good with this internet and other stuff, 
So wherever we vacation is up to you. Naruto was going to put his faith that Makima knew what she was doing. Makima smiled. She leaned down further and pressed their foreheads together. Yes, I will make book us a two week stay, after which, you and I will abandon this country. Makima had most of her body wrapped around Naruto, and she was comfortable. I have to pee. Hold it. Makima told him, since she was comfortable. Naruto, on the other hand, just stood up with her still wrapped around him. Let go, or be prepared to watch me pee. I'm fine with that. You're weird. No, I'm just very comfortable. Weirdo. Whoa, ass cheeks. Well, clothing is optional for half of this resort. Makima stated to Naruto as they walked past a middle aged couple who were butt naked, just going about their vacation and minding their own business. She got Aki, Denji, and Power to look after her dogs for the two weeks she was taking a vacation. She knew they either loved or feared her, and thus wouldn't do anything to displease her such as doing a poor job at taking care of her dogs. Naruto mouthed the word, optional, as he saw more and more people who were butt naked the closer they got to the check-in desk. There. Are a lot of middle-aged and older people here. Oh. I guess there are. Does it matter though? Let's not let others get in the way of our vacation. Makima didn't even pay any attention to the other humans who were at the resort. She didn't bother seeing any of their faces, and she saw them as just naked humans through her lenses of not caring. There was only one naked human she wanted to see, and he was the 17 year old that she was currently in a committed contract with. Not marriage. Her contract was unbreakable, there was no divorce from her contract like there was with marriage. In that aspect, she had a stronger bond with the man next to her than any woman could have with her husband. It kind of does matter. Oh, don't pretend to be a prude, we both know you couldn't care less. You're just nervous. Makima glanced at Naruto. He was carrying both of their luggage. He was acting the part of the husband after all, and Naruto thought of this as one very long date, a two week long date. Look on the bright side. Your body is much more interesting than all of these humans. Makima smirked as she actually looked at a naked human male, 29, who passed by them. Such a boring body. Now that she had her Naruto, she could see just how boring the normal human body was. It had limits on it that were pathetic, and it lacked the same vitality that Naruto's body oozed off of him in the form of his chakra. Naruto's chakra network and tenketsu as they were called made his body brim with such dense life force. His scent was just so much stronger, his body was even stronger than that, and every inch of his body was something she wanted to burn into her memory. The girl with that man. The front desk was in view, but they were stopped. How? You two look like the reverse of us. It's nice to see that we aren't the only age gap couple here. We're here for two more weeks, how about we get dinner sometime? The girl, Naruto's age, spoke as she pulled the man with her towards Naruto and Makima. Makima's smile faded as she stared at the girl. Uh, sure. Naruto was a little distracted by the girl being fully naked and such. She had slender build, and he kind of noticed her purple hair and green eyes but he was more focused on her boobs that were just out. Makima glanced at the choker the girl wore. Also the grenade pin that stuck out of the side of her neck. Sure, we would love to. Come on, we can see them later. Makima tapped on Naruto's chin and pointed his head up to the girl's eyes, so that he was looking her in the face instead of at her body. Naruto blinked when his point of view was changed for him, and he got a good look at the girl's eyes. Naruto made eye contact with the girl though. Naruto looked at the man as well, right in his eyes. They are both soldiers. Her smile is fake, and he is following orders, but he is disgusted to be holding arms with the girl. Naruto could see the eyes of a soldier who would sacrifice anything for their orders in both of their eyes, but the girl seemed to have a spark of hope buried deep in her eyes. It was deep, but Naruto could see a twinkle of a real girl in them. The smallest sparks of light in her dark soul. Come. Makima pulled him along. But Naruto turned his head when he passed the couple. Their bodies were honed, she was slender because she had very little excess fat. By this world's standards, she had a trained body made for murder. The man just looked similar to your average athlete. Those. Assassins, seems one of us is being targeted for assassination or capture. I will guess this is a honey trap to seduce you into joining their group. They aren't a threat. Makima stated as her smirk slowly grew on her face. She passed her ID to the front desk clerk, and in return they were given two room keys. What did you see? Makima asked with a sigh. The girl. She has a small bit of light in her soul. You want to save her. 
despite her being an assassin sent after you, most likely. Then again, I don't think you would hate somebody who just tried to hurt you. Makima sighed, because that was an annoying trait. Naruto was the type to not hate a person even when by all accounts he should hate them. He was just a very hateful person, and was lacking the lust for battle and blood that everyone seemed to think he had. He was a big, cuddly teddy bear. Once they got to their room, Naruto tossed all of the luggage on the bed. Makima unbuttoned her shirt and started to strip naked right then and there, no hesitation in starting off the lewd vacation. Naruto stared at Makima's butt as she released her boobs from the confines of her bra, he just stared at her butt as she bent over and removed her pants. Her panty-clad ass was the focus of his attention even as it changed from a panty-class ass, into a bare ass. Makima placed a strap on her thigh, and took their room keys and put them in her wallet, before she tucked the wallet into a waterproof case that was attached to the strap. Just like that, Makima was mostly undressed, only wearing a strap on her thigh, and that was it. Do I arouse you? Yes. Good. It pleases me to have you admit it. Let's see what this hotel has to offer. Well. Come on. You don't need these here. Makima started to unbutton his shirt for him. She nibbled on his neck as she stripped him. He was rock hard by the time she pulled his pants down. Makima smiled up at him, as if she expected it. Very well, we can quickly take care of this, and then explore the resort. Makima put her hands on the door and leaned forward, pushing her butt out. Makima closed her eyes with a smirk when his hands grabbed her waist, and she hummed in satisfaction when she felt him penetrate her. It was quite the pleasurable feeling for her when he pushed as far as he could go, and their hips touched. Her butt touching his hips, and him squeezing her waist with his hands harder due to him exerting himself. I was thinking we could find some place to get a coffee, maybe relax by a pool. Huh. Oh. Yeah. Sure. Naruto wasn't thinking about plans and what they would do at the resort. He was more concerned with the act he was currently doing as he moved his hips forward. You sure we need to do this quickly? Naruto kind of wanted to try and take his time and explore her body more. We'll be able to enjoy a longer sex session later, for now, this will do to calm your excitement. So please, don't hold back. Makima would enjoy herself with a short session or a long session. She took satisfaction in the simple fact that it didn't matter how long the sex lasted, because it was sex that only she was getting. Only she was getting sex with this person who stood at the top of the food chain on this world, meaning that only she would ever get to use her body to memorize the shape of him inside of her. She told Naruto not to hold back, which is why Naruto didn't last as long as he could have. Makima felt him push as far as possible, with him just barely reaching her womb, she felt the pressure of the tip of his dick touching it. He stopped, held that position for a bit, before his softened up and slipped out of her. Ahahe. Whoops. I'm happy you enjoyed yourself. I'm going to savor you on this vacation. So enjoy my body to your heart's content. Your biology isn't quite human. So maybe I will get pregnant by the end of this vacation. Who knows? Maybe you just got me pregnant now. Makima teased Naruto as she ran a finger up his neck and stopped at his chin. She didn't believe she was pregnant. Oh. Uh. By the end of this vacation, the inside of your body will be a desert, and the inside of mine will be an ocean. But until then, let's take a day to relax, maybe by the pool with some coffee. Makima really pushed the relaxing by the pool with a coffee. Makima pulled him to her and wrapped her body to his arm, and with that they started their vacation. Naruto was confused. Why would the inside of my body be a desert, and hers be an ocean? I don't get that reference. Naruto had no clue what Makima was saying she would do. It sounded strangely hot though. Thank you all for signing up for this class. Uh. Naruto groaned in slight annoyance with a super chipper, high energy, woman wearing an employee uniform stood in front of the class. Naruto looked at Makima, who was sitting on the same mat as he was. They were both butt naked, but so were everyone else in the class. Everyone was a couple, and it was so hard to not let his eyes wander around the room. Makima elbowed him very gently. Pay attention. Okay, for this couple's class, we're going to explore our partner's bodies and then let them explore our body in return. By using our hands to paint a picture with paint, using. Blah, blah, blah. Naruto didn't care, Makima signed them up for this. He read the summary, and the summary of the class was that it was supposed to deepen a bond between you and your partner by touching and feeling their body as you painted your feelings onto them, or just had fun exploring with paint. 
Mikema nudged him again when he was barely paying attention to the teacher of the lesson, and he responded by just looking at her with a face that showed how bored he was. The woman continued to talk for 30 minutes straight. It was 30 minutes of rules and explanations before they actually got to the fun part of what was supposed to be a good resort activity. The woman started to gather paint sets for everyone and pass them around the room. Do you want to go first, or should I paint you? Makima asked, since they would be taking turns painting each other. Naruto just extended his arms, and opened his body to her so that she could give him a layer of paint. Just relax, if anything, this will be a fun little distraction. And look on the bright side. Makima opened up the red paint and squirted some of it onto the palm of her hand. Splat, cold. Naruto felt Makima put her hand right at his belly, starting at his belly button. She quickly smeared it up his torso at an angle and curved it, and she brought her hand back so that she could get more red paint and did the same thing to the other side. She created one big red heart that covered his entire torso, with the bottom being on his belly button. She started to slowly and sensually smear the red paint so that it was filly up the inside of the heart. Okay. Her delicate fingers massaging his chest and belly felt good as she wiggled them slowly. She was getting a handful of his flesh as she painted the heart onto him. She didn't look him in the face, she looked at where she was painting with a serene gaze. She brought her hand to her chin, and smeared a little red on herself. Well, at least that makes it easier for me to paint. Makima grabbed the white paint and USUED her fingers to cover his now hardening member with it. She didn't hesitate to paint him white down below, before she added two thin white blots on his balls. She used her pinky to poke two blue dots onto the white spots on his balls. What are you doing? Naruto asked, since she was now painting the area around his dick and covering the unpainted parts of his balls a silver color. Makima was enjoying herself, he could tell. Making a unicorn. Hehiha. <laughs> Naruto couldn't stop himself as he laughed into his hands. That was both humiliating and hilarious, because he could see it more as she painted. Once Makima had fully finished her unicorn, she started to spread blue paint on his shoulders and speared it over the unpainted parts of his torso that were still the color of his skin. She gave him a blue shirt, but she did so very carefully and very deliberately. Naruto saw the girl from before and her partner. She was being painted in the most uniform way possible. All he was doing was painting her body three colors. He painted her from the neck to her tits as the color white, like he was putting a stripe around her body. Then he painted blue, as another stripe that went from the white stripe all the way down to just above her pussy. Now he was painting her legs red, and covering everything he could in red. Russian flag. Oh. Sure. Naruto looked back to Makima when she glanced to where he was looking, and saw him looking at the odd couple. When the girl was finished getting painted, she started to paint her body. Makima was nowhere near finished with him though like the girl's partner was with her, where he painted her as quickly as possible, Makima took her time and was very careful to get every nook and cranny of his body with paint. With one hand, she started to paint his ribs with a white stripe, and with her other hand she used white paint as lotion and started to get his attention. How does that feel? Different. Weird. Naruto muttered, and nobody really paid too much attention to the fact that Makima was giving him a handjob right in the middle of the room. When she finished putting a stripe on his painted on shirt, she switched hands to do it with the other side. I think you've painted my dick enough. I'm just exploring your body. It is part of the lesson. Makima didn't even look at Naruto in the face when she spoke. She just explored his body with her eyes, while constantly looking to where she was jerking. She put her forehead against his cheek and leaned forward. She wrapped her hand around his body and started to add green paint to his back. She smiled when he came on her forearm. She just wrapped her fingers around the base of his dick and squeezed before he could even start to go soft, and she kept him semi-hard. She was enjoying her exploration to be sure, because she kept her pinky and thumb firmly wrapped around him, and would just tickle and scratch at his penis with her other fingers. All while still painting him. Makima. This. SSSSSHHHH. I'm just exploring your body, making sure the paint is even. Makima did more than that. She managed to change him from half hard back to fully hard using nothing but her fingers to coax it out of him. It only took her moments after that to cover her forearm with another coat of white paint as well, she played on him being extremely sensitive after the act. Makima. Yes? Makima glanced up to his eyes. She let go of him and raised her forearm, before she gently licked the white covering her forearm. Oh. It must be your turn to paint me. It seems I have painted every part of you I am allowed. You look rather. I don't think I did quite a good job. 
I guess I am not much a painter. Makima slyly admitted to her own faults as she got up to her knees and examined her work. The unicorn I made almost looks sad, his horn is rather limp. Makima turned around and raised her arms up, showing her back to Naruto while always staying on her knees. Naruto looked around the room, making sure nobody saw him coming. If anyone saw, they didn't care. His heart was pounding even as Makima glanced back at him with her Makima smile. His hands, now with paint on his palms, touched her shoulders. He didn't have a goal or some art design, but he dragged his hands down her back as if he were scratching her. His fingers left a trail of orange paint from her shoulders, down to the middle of her thighs, even going over her butt. Naruto watched as his fingers sank into her flesh different, and even the different parts of her body felt different. Her shoulders, soft, but hard thanks to the bones. Her back, soft and thin, he could feel her bones with how much pressure her body, and her could feel her muscle. His fingers sank further into her back than her shoulders, which felt looser. The lower down her back her went, the more different combinations of soft and hard he got. Then her butt, his fingers sank into her ass deeper than her back, and the softness was a firm, but not hard, softness. Makima slowly smirked the lower he went, and closed her eyes when he went for more paint in a finger color. He raised her arms up and gripped her forearms, before he smeared paint down her body again. I can feel the difference in the muscles of her forearms, to the muscles of her biceps. Her arms thinner than you would expect with how strong she is. There is a different coolness here. Naruto placed his palms on her pits. The skin of her armpit was nothing but soft and it gave, as he pushed his fingers, it was the loosest flesh he found. He strayed down and got to her ribs, before he got more paint. He reached around and painted her belly. Her belly was toned, but you wouldn't be able to tell given just how much it felt like there was a little fat there. A slight give as he ran his hands up her stomach and to her ribs once more, before he needed more paint. He had felt her breasts before, but now he was paying attention to them and the difference location made on softness. Makima didn't have huge boobs, but they have enough size that as he moved his hands up, he pulled them up with him. They bounced when his hands got to above her breasts. It seems the unicorn isn't sad anymore. I hate you. Naruto deadpanned as he leaned forward and pushed his forehead into her neck. You turned my dick into a unicorn. Makima. Naruto stated to her as she raised her feet up. She was glancing back at him, since their bodies were closer together. She raised back behind her and wrapped her arms around his head, pulling it closer to her neck. She also wrapped her feet around his dick. Your hands stopped. Oh, did they? Naruto asked sarcastically, and he moved his hands right back to her boobs, smearing a different color paint on them. He grabbed them this time, and she rolled her head so that their eyes were inches apart. His left eye and her right eye could not little but look at each other. She wiggled her toes and started to stroke him. Makima. I'm still. Oh? Makima saw him grab the black paint. If my dick is a unicorn, this is a black hole. It sucks everything and can't be satisfied. Naruto covered her crotch in pitch black paint. She pressed her back up against him as he started to liberally apply his coating of black paint. This happy couple gets it. Look, they understand the lesson, have fun, explore, and paint your feelings, and look in the art. Naruto came when the employee startled him by just coming up to them and speaking. Thank you, and Naruto. I'll have you know, nothing fills me with more satisfaction, than making you come. I'm not a black hole. I'm a sperm bank. Your sperm bank. And I enjoy accepting your deposits. The hell is a sperm bank? Naruto was so confused when Makima said that line, as if it was supposed to be hot or something. Well. It is a bank that stores, buys, and sells sperm. That's gross. Naruto deadpanned at her. Why would somebody? You know. Never mind. I'm about done. Naruto had finished painting Makima as well. He stood up and appreciated his word. Just a bunch of random colors all over her body, except for her pussy which was not visible due to all the dripping black paint. Her back matched his front thanks to him pressing up against her, though his scratch marks from earlier were a little visible. I believe my flirting was quite good, you're just not from this world. Makima wrapped her arm around him and looked to the employee, who took their picture. You can buy this picture for twenty. We'll take it. Makima looked towards the woman from before, who looked towards her. Makima smirked before she showed off the fresh sperm that was on her lower back. The woman showed no outward reaction, but her partner whispered something into her ear. The girl nodded her head. Naruto heard them. 
I will try and seduce the control devil from the target, you try and seduce the target. Be sure to get him, we did not spend two weeks hunting down the pregnancy devil just so that you could fail to get pregnant with our next superweapon. I see. So that is the game. This isn't some assassination. It is a honey trap. I'm guessing somebody made a contract with the pregnancy devil so that the girl would have a 100% chance of becoming pregnant the next time she had sex. They are trying to create a superweapon with my jizz. Naruto got the answer. Makima couldn't hear what they had said, but he could. Japan wanted to control him. Now, Russian wanted to turn his children into weapons. Oh. So you figured out what their plan is, since it's Russia. If this is not assassination, then my guess would be. Judging by your face. Ah. They wish to accept your bloodline into their country as a weapon. Makima whispered as she reached up and stroked his chin. Her smile turned cold. Naruto shivered at how possessive her eyes became. Don't worry. I won't kill her, but I won't let her get your seed either. As you said, I'm your black hole. I'm going to suck everything you have, and I will never be satisfied so long as there is more to suck out. Makima assured him. She had no intentions of sharing even a drop of his seed with anyone else. Well, unless of course she could make that to her advantage. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.